Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today I'm going to give you a real life example on how tax treaties work because there can sometimes be some confusion on this matter. I'm going to use an example from uh, somebody who was a close friend of mine and uh, yeah we're going to we're going to dive into it. Before we get started, if you have not already, obliterate the subscribe button, smash it, hammer it, destroy it, whatever it is that they say these days. Uh, you know, I'm learning this, uh, this stuff. Anyway, click the notification bell. Apparently there's some stuff you can do that helps you to get notified. Uh, later on, check out some of our other videos. I try to produce lots of quality content for you and, uh, and definitely reach out to us if you're interested in services or help or anything like that. Now, with that in mind, jumping into this tax treaty thing. So first of all, I sometimes have people who contact me and they're talking about tax treaties and they're saying, oh, hey, well, you know, this country has a tax treaty with this one. And I'm like, well, it actually doesn't matter in that situation. Okay, so it is worth noting what tax treaties are important for and specifically then how they work when you do actually get to apply them. Okay, so let's start off with the fact that tax treaties are useful when there is a risk of double taxation. Literally, they're called double tax agreements or agreements for the you know, avoidance of double tax, whatever, however they phrase it in, uh, in these things. Okay, so if you're not in a situation where there's a concern about tax is being charged in two countries, you don't have to worry about tax treaties. So in many, many cases, you don't have to worry about it, okay? Uh, and usually when we're helping people structure how their corporate setup is gonna be, we almost always try and make it so that we don't have to, we, we want it the simplest possible structure. So if possible, I don't want any transfer pricing. If possible, I don't wanna have to deal with tax treaties. If possible, I don't wanna have to deal with you know, attribution rules or something like this, right? So, that being said, what about in cases where you do? What are the what are the things that factor out here? All right, there's a number of them. So generally speaking, tax treaties do a few things for you. One is they clarify where a company or individual is resident, all right? Meaning, uh, sometimes the nature of the rules are that two countries want to claim that person as a tax resident, okay? And a tax treaty is designed to help figure out, in that case, you're only tax resident here or here. So you don't have to worry about being tax resident both, which is a possibility in some cases. It's a really bad possibility. You do not want to be tax resident in multiple places. I had somebody contact me recently. They're like, hey, can I be tax resident in two places and get this? It's like, well, you could be, but it basically never benefits you. Not, I, I can't think of a single scenario where it benefits you, okay? so. Don't be tax resident in both places. Take advantage of optimizing yourself not to deal with that. Okay, assuming now that you're in a situation where you are, uh, that residency thing is taken care of, you may still have uh, income related to both countries. And this helps to clarify which portion of income is taxable. And generally it clarifies it that uh, a foreign country cannot tax you uh, except for where there's a permanent establishment. Usually that's the case and there's some uh, details around what constitutes a permanent establishment, okay, which is a very broad subject. I have a video on permanent establishments. You can go and check it out, okay? So that's the next thing. Now, beyond this, we start to, and, you know, they go through a variety of different definitions. What is, you know, an independent agent? What's a dependent agent? What's, you know, uh, like all different, different, they have sections for each different scenario, hopefully the majority of them that you're going to run into, okay? The thing that becomes most relevant, though, usually is where there is certain types of income being paid from one place to another, where by merit of it being income coming from there, it means that it would be taxable there. And usually this is subject to what's called withholding tax. So usually tax treaties are useful in cases where you would have a withholding tax obligation, okay? So what is withholding tax on? The most three common are rent, royalties, and dividends, okay? Rent, royalties, and dividends are, uh, sorry, not rent, interest, royalties, and dividends. Uh, rent is usually attributed to a permanent establishment. So that's how, uh, and same thing with real property situated there, okay? So interest, royalties, dividends. All right, sometimes there's also technical service fees. Sometimes there's also director's fees. Uh, those are kind of like some of the scenarios that play out, okay? The way that this works, you know, usually is that what it does is it takes the tax rate and I'm going to use a real example in a minute and kind of explain it to you guys. It takes uh, a tax rate and it reduces that tax rate by X, Y, Z amount. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, next, once it does that, you say, okay, great, we're having this tax rate lowered. 
uh, that tax is probably going to be payable in both countries. Okay, so pretty much what they're doing is they're kind of like splitting it. So let's use a re real example. Uh, if you are, let's say, uh, well, in this particular case, uh, this is a scenario where somebody uh, outside of the U.S. Uh, was a partial owner or is a partial owner in a U.S. company. Okay, so the U.S. company uh, is paying some sort of a distribution to the foreign shareholder. Okay, and under this scenario, they are required to withhold. Now, why are they required to withhold? They're required to withhold because of the fact that uh, the, I, the, the IRS has no ability to enforce their rules on a foreign shareholder. Okay, so they can't insist that that person files a tax return and they, they collect the money back. So instead what they do is they put the reporting on withholding obligation onto the payee, uh, the payer, sorry, in, uh, in the US and say, hey, hold that back, submit it on their behalf, and then they aren't gonna worry about it, okay? So normally you could have withholding at up to 30%, okay? So 30% is pretty high rate, right? So under a tax treaty, that might get reduced like a normal scenario in, in a lot of countries, you'll see there's a 30% withholding rate and they'll reduce it to 15% for interest, for royalties. Uh, dividends is sometimes different. Uh, it depends a little bit on country to country. So, but that's usually the idea. And you can kind of just think about this. Like, okay, they're saying, hey, we're splitting it. That's kind of the mental logic behind it, right? Sometimes you can go over to lower. Sometimes it's 10%, sometimes it's 5%. Depends, right? But in this particular case, they had some, uh, some withholding. Now. Here is the interesting thing that I want to get into with you guys. In this scenario, uh, they happen to mention to me, they say, hey, you know, listen, I'm supposed to be, they're saying that I'm subject to this 40 whatever odd, basically 50% tax, right? And I'm like, that doesn't sound right. Fill me in a little bit on the situation. And so they start to explain, hey, listen, you know, I'm a shareholder, or rather my company is a shareholder in this, uh, this company. And so they're supposed to withhold at the top marginal tax rate. And I said, well, hang on a minute. What's going on here? They're paying out, uh, and so you know they're kind of like, yeah, they're paying me a dividend. Okay, so if it was a dividend, they wouldn't withhold at the top marginal tax rate. What they would do is they would withhold at the dividend withholding rate according to the tax treaty. But in this situation, it actually was not a dividend. Okay, so this is the first kind of technicality, which is you have to be aware that uh, partnership income is not dividends, okay? So if you, let's say that you're investing in a company in the US, let's say it's a US LLC uh, or a US limited partnership, partnership of some sort, right? So you're one of the members of, let's say that LLC, it's treated as a partnership and it has US source income, meaning that there are people actually in operations in the country who are doing work, okay? Now, there's a portion of that income which gets sent to you as the member, right? It's kind of like your share of the profits. Well, in that scenario, that is not a dividend. So the dividend rates, which are lower than the regular income rates, uh, would then be subject to the dividend uh, withholding tax rules under the tax treaty, if there's a tax treaty. In this particular case, there was a tax treaty, okay? But it's not. It's not a, uh, <laughs> it's not a dividend. It's just flow through income from a partnership. And so because of that, you have the full tax rate, which is applicable in these cases, okay? So you're like, okay, well, that's, that's not so good. Uh, so this is the first technicality, right? Pay attention to when you're designing your structure. Now, be aware, of course, dividends are paid from after uh, tax profits, okay? Retained earnings after tax. So normally what would happen is, let's just say we were in a state where there was uh, no state income tax. That wasn't the case here, but let's just say that it was. Uh, so you have a 21% corporate tax rate so basically, let's say that, for instance, $100,000 was earned, 21% tax, that rate gets paid, a dividend gets paid out. When that dividend gets paid out, it's subject to withholding tax, right? Up to uh, 30%, but you know it's gonna be mitigated by whatever the tax treaty is. So let's say 15%, I mean, it could be lower. It just depends country to country, right? Could be 5%. So you have to stack those two taxes on each other, okay? By contrast, you say, okay, great, well, we have profits in this partnership, and so the partnership is distributing money. The partnership then doesn't pay tax at a company level. The income just flows straight to you, but you pay a higher tax rate. So as an investor, you kind of have to think this through a little bit to see what is going to make the most sense for you, okay? That's the, the first thing. And being aware that the dividend uh, 
clause of the tax treaty does not apply to this income. All right, that's the first thing. Uh, however, uh, in this particular scenario, what they had failed to note was that the payment was going to a corporate entity rather than an individual, and so there's different rules when you're looking at corporate tax versus personal tax. So you can kind of play this out uh, in some different ways. But the bottom line is, what's happening here? You, for some reason, are receiving income. That income might be royalties income, might be interest income, might be dividend income. We're going to ignore for today director's fees and technical service fees, things like this. They are required to withhold. You now have to say, okay, great, well, under the tax treaty, I'm a resident of this country. This is the terms of the tax treaty. Do these apply? If they apply, I get a reduced rate of withholding. When I receive that money in my home country, I am then going to pay taxes at the appropriate levels in my home country, okay? So if they, if they tax dividends, you're getting taxed on the dividends. If they don't tax dividends, you're not getting taxed on the dividends. If it's royalties, they're gonna, you know, whatever the tax rules that apply to that type of income for you are going to apply there. The important thing, if there's flow-through income, flow-through income is not dividend income, okay? It's regular income. If there is no uh, like permanent establishment, no source income, et cetera, then very often the income can flow through. I've created a bunch of videos on this about limited partnerships, limited viability partnerships, et cetera. So sometimes that income can flow without tax. But if it is attributable to a permanent establishment, et cetera, et cetera, then it's going to be subject to local tax. Okay? So it's subject to local tax. Now it's getting taxed at the full rate. Now, here's the problem. It will then be subject to tax in your home country. Okay? Now, there may be a scenario under which your home country offers tax credits, okay? If they do, then the way that this usually works is they'll basically allow you to deduct from the tax owing whatever tax you have paid. And so you'll end up paying the higher of the two taxes, right? Fairly reasonable. Doesn't, if you're in a low tax country, this wasn't particularly great for you because you ended up paying higher tax, but you know, you at least didn't get double taxed, okay? So anyway. That's pretty much the idea. I hope that kind of makes sense here. You have one receiving from another. There's a border in between. You send it across. Depending on the type of income, it's subject to withholding. There's, in this example, we used four types of income. We had interest, we had royalties, we have dividends, and we have regular flow-through income. Uh, that's going to determine the rate of withholding. Then, on the other side, you're going to go, and that's going to be based on the tax treaty, on the other side, you're going to pay your taxes according to the type of income that's received uh, and possibly be able to claim some tax credits. And your idea is to try and reduce the amount in general, okay? If you want some help with that, if you're in a situation where you uh, are, you know, paying a bunch of tax, receiving income from abroad, etc., reach out to us. You can book a call with me, clarity.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer. There's a link below to click on. You can visit our website, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. And uh, yeah, happy to help you. Happy to help you with generally uh, reducing your international tax burden, uh, planning and forming entities, asset protection, banking, residencies, citizenships, payment processing, etc. Please, if you liked this video, click the subscribe button. Check out our other videos. We got a bunch of them. Share this video with some friends. You know, that helps us out. We really like it. Click the like button. I'm going to see you guys in the next video.